Hello YouTube and welcome back. In this video, which is the last video of our series I shot with Lake Speed Jr., we're going to be discussing cylinder finish. And back in the day, you could just take your finger, run it down a, a cylinder bore and go, that's good enough. It's smooth enough. It never really worked that way anyway. Um, it may feel smooth to you, but unless you have a Michitoyu profilometer or any brand um, that's the most popular one, then the fingernail way of feeling it is not good enough anymore. It really wasn't good enough back in the day. Nowadays, it does make a difference. If we're working with the Total Seal ring, that's a ultra fine ring real thin and the materials have changed we need to change the way that we hone a cylinder let's get to it um gonna put myself on the sword we're gonna go ahead and, and check a block that i had no intention of having lake uh um check it but i did so let's see how it turned out see it do um if you beep and then it ends it we're over <laughs> then <laughs> i think would you mind yeah we check the block sure we, we... Now you want to tell everybody what 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 you're doing. Yeah, so this is a Mitateo profilometer. It's called an SJ210, which is a surface roughness measuring tool. So it can see down to about a millionth of an inch. Uh, so it's pretty pretty fine, pretty cool stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in the bore, and I'm gonna turn it on. Oh, it's not liking that setup. What we can do is we can just put it in here just like this, right? And then I'm gonna hit start. And when it's doing it, there's a diamond tip stylus in there and it's gonna drag it along the cylinder and it's gonna measure the surface roughness of that cylinder. And then it's gonna give us a printout of what that surface roughness is. So this one's coming back as an RA of 17. What we can do is we can kind of page over here and that kind of gives you the that little picture. That right look of what, there you there go. go. So you can see the peaks and the valleys, and this is a pretty good looking profile, um, they call a plateau type finish. And the way you can see it is this curve right here. So this area up here is the peaks, which is gonna rub off during break-in. And then this is their core roughness, and that little turn there is the valleys. So that's gonna be able to give us, so get back over here to the part where you can really see the trace again. Um, those are the valleys that are going to hold the oil for both ring seal and for lubrication. And then those peaks are going to wear off over time. So that's actually not a really bad looking surface. Pretty good, bud. That surface roughness would work with both the molly ring and a uh, steel ring. And then that RZ is their total peak to valley height. And that gives us, a, that's a good number that kind of says, hey, you know what, this, this surface That'll get the job done. All right. Yeah. All right. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave this in. Yeah. And what we're talking about, when you bore in a, in a, in a boring bar, no matter what boring bar you have, um, the, the, it's, it's actually a, a violent thing that's happening. So when you bore, you have a carbide cutter bit, and whatever bit you want to do, it's ripping the metal. Yes. So as it's coming around, and every time it goes around one it's time, cutting. it yeah. drops, and it yeah. just fits there. And if you look at it, a uh, microscope, look at it with any kind of magnifying glasses, it's hard. It's really just you know ripping the finish. No matter how nice it looks, you will never run the ring with that bore finish. No, it's it's a cutting tool. It's a cut, and so it, it's it's cutting and leaving tears and all that stuff like you would normally expect from cutting something. Yes, honing is completely different. It's an abrasive, so it's smoothing. It's more of almost like lapping. And so what we were seeing is okay, those deeper valleys were probably from residual from the boring bar, but now it's come in and it's smoothed everything out so that you have a smoother running surface, but you still have some of those deeper valleys to yes. retain the oil. So you figure they're just high spikes. So you come in with the hone, you're starting to take off the high spot. You're still gonna have the valleys, yep. but you're starting to work the, the high spots off. Yep. So what, what we do is like what, what I would think would be, but you tell me if I'm right or wrong, is I follow what Smokey would do, like a plateau hone. Yep. So we're gonna start off with a rough finish, we're gonna bore. Yep. I like to leave about th three and a half 
uh, you know, uh, small, yeah, three and a half to four, I think, on, on some of these on the board, yeah, because so I have enough room there to hone. A lot of production shops will board a one and a half or two thousandths to size, yeah, hit it a couple of times, and out the door it goes. I don't know how they get away with that. That's a different production shop. Um, yeah. I, I may leave more meat there than necessary. If I'm going to put a torque plate, we're going to leave it even a little more. But then I go with the, with the, with the rough, and then the medium, and then the fine stone. Yep. And then when I'm done, I hit it with the, with the, the bristle brush, the, the, the yep. plateau brush. So yep. that's what, you know. So you can take that mid-step out, and you have a little more valley left. So you could have a little more valley, which would be better for, say, uh, a methanol fueled engine or E85 or something like that, where you're going to put more fuel a lot in. Of fuel. Like for this being an RV, this is going to actually pump gas. Mm -hmm. That's a perfectly fine finish. Okay. But if this is going to say same block or same engine in, a, in an alcohol car, an alcohol car, take that mid step out and go all the way to size with your rough abrasive, and then just kiss it with the final abrasive. Really? Yep. That will basically leave that same smooth on top. But it'll give you that deeper valley underneath. To hold it because it's alcohol is washing oil, all the oil off the yes, side. Exactly. Yes, that's why you do. Yeah. In, in alcohol, you, you want to change the oil out, uh, you know, if not every race, at least every week, every night of racing. But because you're dumping so much of alcohol in the cylinder, it gets in the oil. Right, I mean, your air fuel ratio is essentially double. Yeah. So you, have, you have to run twice the amount of alcohol, essentially, than you do gasoline to maintain the proper stoichiometric ratio for the combustion to yeah. happen correctly. Uh, so when you do that, that extra volume of fuel going through the cylinder is going to try to wash the oil off the wall, which is washing away your seal and your lubrication. So by adding more valley to the finish, you're retaining more oil to fight against it. Awesome. I, I love that. That's that, that is all. Like I said, that's why you end up with so much alcohol in your oil after uh, a night of racing. Uh, and what happens a lot of times is people will hone an engine for an alcohol engine just like you did, and then they struggle with ring seal, with, they with struggle ring. with fuel dilution because they're not getting as good a seal as they could because they don't have enough valley to hold enough oil. Another reason why, do you think the guy at the machine shop is going to ask you, hey, are you an E85? Pretty much all the, not say pretty much, I, I, I'm real bad of saying never, no, yeah, always, yeah, 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 pretty much. That, yeah. A lot of the guys nowadays have gone to E85. And a lot of the young guys, I guess, are uh, b b boosted applications. Right. Everybody's running E85. Not, once again, I shouldn't use the word everybody. Well, but a, a lot, lot of, people, of people who are running boost are running E85. Yes. Especially in the street cars. They're making crazy. They're running nines. They're, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a different world. When we were growing up, you know, if you ran a 10-second quarter mile, you were bad to the bone. Right. Now, if you're on a nine, you're, you're a punk. You're like, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's a different world now. But so... Uh, um, the finish is 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 I, like I said. It's also it's even, more critical. The, the high it's the higher you go in horsepower, the more critical all the details are. So tell you almost gotta be proactive, and when you walk into the shop, you gotta ask for the finish. You gotta tell them what you're what you're up yeah, to. Yeah, because if you don't tell them so you're hey, running 85, I'm, I'm running a steel ring. I'm running boost. I'm running the 85. They need to know these kind of things so they can hone the block correctly. For your application, like I said, don't blame us. Well, I got a, I got a, I got a problem. I was telling you earlier about. Yeah, don't blame the rings. Don't yeah, blame don't, the oil. Don't blame the cylinder guy. Don't, don't blame all that stuff. It's a combination, and you got to make sure that you're telling the cook that you want chili, not clam chowder. Yeah. I think we're done. It's awesome. Yeah. All right, so I think I'm keeping this there. <laughs> and thanks for stopping by. No Always problem, been busy man. with you. We can go on and on and on, and this camera will shut off again. Exactly. And it's already cut us off once. That we're done with y'all. Y'all talk yeah. too much. So we'll see y'all later. <laughs> Thank you. I gotta get to work. Beep. All right. I hope you enjoyed this series that I shot with Lake Speed Junior. Um, broke it down into a lot of small, short videos, a little easier to digest. Next week we're gonna have the full video just the way it dropped very little editing and you can just watch the whole thing we had a blast we can talk for hours as you probably already know so hope you've enjoyed it stay tuned for next week before we end it stop hit the like button hit the subscribe button tell your buds tell your friends tell your chickens tell your cats and dogs and i'll see you on the next one because i gotta get to the next project which is this big block chevy and of course we're using good rings See you on the next one.